started. Let me just. Okay. Well, welcome everyone. It is great to see all of you today. Thank you so much for joining us for our pitch competition information session. My name is Yeri Olivares. I am the Chief Operating Officer and City of I Executive Director for the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation. Thank you all for joining us today. Today, I'm gonna be going over something very exciting, which is the, um, the launch of our pitch competition that we're looking to have in the fall. What we're going to cover today is we're going to go over um, basically the who, what, what, when, and where um, of what this pitch competition is going to be about. We're going to go over the timeline, what that looks like, what the application process is like, and we're going to go over a little bit about the pitch deck and give you some tips as to what that would entail. Um, what we have... Um, Um, the first is basically the the why, um, why this pitch competition. And so we know that, you know, early stage companies or startups that are just getting started is just, a, it's a temporary organization in search of a repeatable, scalable, and profitable business model. What that means is that we know that you're in a phase where you're needing investment and that you're needing some capital to be able to grow so that you can become a um, stable and profitable business. And so, um, with that, we decided to create a local group of angel investors so that they so that then we can bring investment opportunities to all of the small businesses here in the Central Valley that traditionally um, don't have these type of investment opportunities, especially here in the Central Valley. So we're very excited to be able to um, not only be hosting our, um, you know, an annual pitch competition, but that we're also forming a network of angel investors here in the area that can be something we can continue every year. Um, with that, what I would like to now go into is the timeline of you know, what this looks like in the next couple of months. So we have the application open. Um, and in the meantime, we're also going to be providing some pitch prep training so that for those of you that need assistance, we can help you, um, you know, with developing your, your uh, pitch deck. We have right now the application deadline set to July 28th. So you have a few weeks so that you can complete the application and submit it in a little bit. I'm going to share uh, more information as to where you can find, um, where you will be submitting the, the application. Um, once we collect all the applications, we also have um, the investor kickoff that's going to happen sometime in August. And so what that means is that the investors will start reviewing all the applications that were submitted. And from the applications that are submitted, um, they will narrow it down to the top 12. The top 12 will then have the opportunity to pitch to the investors. And from there, um, the investors will select the top six. The top six will then um, go through a due diligence process, which means just gathering more information, asking more questions. And that will happen around September, October, so that the top six that get selected will then present at a live pitch competition that we will have in October. Now, um, the application process is um, basically a platform that we use that's called GUST. Um, this is the profile of what it looks like, um, which is the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation um, uh, GUST platform. And this is a platform that's going to be used by all the investors to review all of the deals that are submitted. Um, there is a fee, it's a $99 application fee, and that application fee is more of for you to see it as an investment, right? So that you can see what, um, so that you can um, potentially, you know, be able to obtain a hundred thousand dollar investment from these investors. So we want to make sure that um, you are very aware of what this entails, and that we help you prepare to submit this this um, uh, this 
uh, application. Um, to the right here is basically an overview of what that profile will look like once you submit an application. Now, um, after this meeting, um, as you're aware, we are recording it. We are going to send all of you the recording, plus we will send a link to the application platform and any additional documents we're going to share with you, such as um, the, the pitch template. Um, but if you look to the right of the screen, you know, you can see basically on um, some tabs that talk about overview, pitch deck, team, executive summary, financials, documents, and additional questions. These are the tabs that you're going to be um, filling out when you submit the application. And of, co of course, it includes you submitting your pitch deck, but also just filling up some uh, additional questions so that the investors can have more information about your business prior to um, you know, uh, selecting you or prior to um, determining if we need to uh, request additional information from you. So to the left is what the GUS platform looks like and what the Fresno Air Hispanic Foundation platform looks like. To the right is what it will look like once you register and um, start filling out the application and providing the information necessary. So with that, we'll move forward to what is a pitch deck. So a pitch deck is going to be a requirement when you submit your, um, your application. And this is just a sample of what a pitch deck could look like. This is just an, 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 a, a sample of about a three to five minute pitch deck. Um, and basically, it's a presentation of your value proposition as a business while communicating the benefits of your product, your traction, your team, um, the market and why you exist. And, you know, you want to make sure that your pitch deck is very clear. And at the end of the days, you want to get the yes, right? You want to be able to hook the investors um, so that, you know, they can give you the opportunity um, to be considered for this investment. And of course, you know, the main purpose is that with this pitch, you're able to, um, uh, spark their interest, their curiosity, so that they want to learn more about your product or your service. Here are some recommendations that we have when it comes to putting together a pitch deck. Um, of course, you know, um, this is something that if you need assistance with, we can help you. Uh, we recommend a 12 slide deck, which is what a general um, deck looks like. Now, when it comes to the timing, you don't have to worry about that right now as far as, um, you know, how much time it's going to take you to do a pitch. We will address that if you are selected to be uh, in the top 20 finalists. We will address those um, things with you at that time. And we will also do one-on-one -on -one, um, sessions so that we can help you prepare you for you to go in front of the investors. Um, you can also use an outline to organize your pitch. When we provide you with the recording of the session and when we provide you with um, the, the link to the application, we will also provide you with a guide that will serve as a template for you to organize your pitch. So if you don't already have one, we can provide a guide for you so that, um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a little bit as well. Um, you can also prepare any other slides that you think may be useful, even though they may not be part of your, your pitch itself, but anything that you think would be useful, and then we can, you know, review it and determine if, if that's something that, um, you know, you would make part of your pitch or not. Um, and like I said, you know, this pitch deck is basically giving you the opportunity to tell us about, you know, what your expected business model is, you know, what, what is it that you're looking to, um, to do with your business, with your product, with your idea, with your service, and where is it that you want to take it? Here are some must-haves when it comes to building a, a pitch deck. You know, you want to make sure that you build credibility. And of course, you know, with that, um, it entails, you know, what is some traction that you've already had or, you know, how realistic is, you know, the problem and the solution that you're offering. You want to be able to communicate that value proposition. Why is your product or service unique? You know, why, what is it that's different from something else that may be similar or that already exists in the market? 
Um, also, you want to talk about why your team, or if it's like if it's just you launching your idea in your business, you know, why are you the most qualified person to do this? Or who is part of your team that's helping you with this? Um, that that are in going to be instrumental in helping you carry out your business idea or scaling your small business. You also want to make sure you cover, you know, your product and the market fit. You know, is this relevant to the market? Who are you targeting? And is this product or service, you know, fit for the solution you're you are proposing um, in regards to the problem you're looking to solve? And the last one is why now? You know, why is this timing um crucial for you, for your business, for your business idea to launch it or to scale it, you know, what is it um, about this moment that um, you want to convey to the investors? So those are just a few, um, you know, pitch deck must-haves for you to keep in mind. Um, this is what we will recommend as the pitch deck template. Again, you know, we are going to send this out to you um, via email after this session. Um, and so we have several points, right? When you start your with your pitch deck, you, you start with your elevator pitch. What that usually entails, you know, a brief summary of, you know, maybe you have a, a slogan for your business or you want to start with the question or proposing of, um, you know, proposing a solution to, to the problem you're going to resolve. So it's a quick, you know, elevator pitch that you give at the beginning with your pitch deck. And then you talk about, you know, what the problem is that you identified and what solution you have to offer to that problem. When after that, you can talk about what's the market size, you know, who is encountering this problem? Who are you providing the solution for? And here you don't want to say that it's for everyone, although maybe it just depends, right? Um, but you know, you want to make sure you have identified a specific market that you're going to market to, that you're going to attract for your particular product or service. You also want to talk about the business model. You know, you want to mention how is this going to be operated? You know, uh, how how are you looking to structure your business model to generate revenue? You know, how are you going to conduct yourselves? And, you know, we talk a little bit more when it comes to um, the financials aspect in this section. You know, how are you going to generate revenue and make it a profitable? Or how are you going to scale your, your business idea or your business? You also want to touch on any uh, particular technology sections that are involved with your business, whether that's related, you know, if, if there's any kind of, for example, if you have an idea that involves a, a um, an application that needs to be developed or how you're going to be using, you know, social media, or how you're going to be using any software that um, is related to making sure that your business model is implemented. So any tech, um, around your, your business idea you want to mention as well. You also want to talk about who is your competition. You know, unless you have a, a, a product or a service that has never been um, invented before and that there's no competition for it, then you can mention that and have your own, you know, research and development about that. But if you are going with a product or service that does have competition, it's very important that you let your investors know that you are aware who your competition is and that you've done your research and have identified. And with that, you identify why your product or service is better than that of your competition or what is your advantage. So you want to make sure that you address you know, who your competition is. You also want to talk about the marketing, like I mentioned earlier. How is it that you're going to get your product or service in the hands of your customers? How are you going to promote it? You know, what avenues and channels are you going to use um, for your marketing? And then I mentioned prior to this on, on the must-haves is the team, right? You want to make sure that depending on the project or depending on the idea and the business that you have, you know, who is going to help you carry this? If you're looking to open a restaurant, but you don't have a cook, it's going to be difficult, right? Because you need a cook. Otherwise, you have no food at a restaurant to be able to serve. So you want to make sure that you describe the qualifications of your team, um, the experience of your team or yourself as well, um, so that you can uh, validate, you know, the the business idea or the the, the product service you product or service that you're pitching to the investors. 
And then last but not least is the ask. You know, what is it that you're looking for? You know, are you looking for an investment so that you can develop an application? Are you looking for an investment so that you can purchase um, equipment? Are you looking for an investment so that you can um, grow your um, skin so you can scale and potentially, you know, um, manufacture your product at larger scales? Are you looking to have a distribution model? What is it that you're looking for? Why is your business at a point that it needs to scale? And how are you going to use those funds? Or if you have a business idea, you know, what is it that you're looking for? Maybe you're looking for additional research and development money. Maybe you're looking for um, funds to help you continue, you know, with the research or, or to develop a prototype. Or maybe you're looking for money so that you can now um, take your product to different markets or, you know, manufacture at levels where you can now have it on the shelves of, you know, retail stores. So, you want to make sure that you have a very clear um, ask of the investors so that they can understand where it is that you want to go with, with your, your proposal. Here are some general tips um, about, you know, putting together your pitch, um, your pitch deck. And when it comes to pitching, you know, you want to be authentic. You want to make sure that, you know, you avoid using um, heavy use of industry specific jargon. You know, the way that we, um, you know, like to say this is, you know, make sure you put together a pitch deck and when you have the opportunity to, to, to present that you do it in a way that anybody can understand, right? That, you know, whether you want to see that as, a, you know, if you explain it to your grandmother that she can understand what you're talking about or that you explain it to, you know, a 10 year old that they can ex and understand what you're talking about. So you want to be very careful with using um, industry specific, you know, jargon. And like I said, keep it as simple as possible so that, you know, everyone can understand. Um, it is good, you know, for you to assume that the audience, that the investors are intelligent but don't assume necessarily that they're knowledgeable in your field. So you want to make sure that, you know, depending your industry, depending the field um, of, of your idea or your product or service, that you are delivering that message um, very clear and very simple. Um, and you also want to make sure that you build trust by making visuals easy to absorb you want to create a story that's unique. You want to be able to have a hook um, and 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 a purpose for profit, right? At the end of the day, you have to make sure that um, the model that you're presenting, that it's profitable because that's what investors are going to look at. What is the potential of, um, you know, your, your business idea or your current existing business to scale? And of course, I have to mention that, you know, the picture that you're seeing here on the screen is of, one of our um, women that participated at a women's conference. Um, this was a grant of $14,000 at Tacos La Fiesta. And um, I see her that she's joined on this call as well. And so, um, like I mentioned, anything that we can do at the Fresno Air Hispanic Foundation to help you prepare with submitting the application, um, we are open to that. We're going to open it up for, for questions in just a few minutes, but we just want to make sure that um, you know, we are providing you with all of the, the guidance and the resources so that for those of you that are interested in submitting an application that, you know, we 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 prepare you, um, you know, to do that. So with that, I would like to open it up for questions. Um, like I said at the beginning, what we're going to do after this session, you know, as you know, we are recording it. So we are going to send over to you the recording of the session so you can have the presentation and have the information that we, pre we presented today. We're also going to be sending to you the, the link to submit an application through that GUS platform that we talked about. We are also going to be sending to you the pitch deck template for you to reference as you're putting together your application. And like I mentioned, you know, we are open to helping you through the process. So if you need assistance or if you would like to um, have a one on one with us, we are happy to, um, you know, work with you. Here is my contact information. Please feel free to reach out. You know, today we have another session that we're going to be doing this evening that was going to be in Spanish. Um, and we probably have a couple more sessions before the application deadline, which is July 28th. Um, and so with that, um, I would like to open it up to see if anybody has any questions. Hello, 
Hello. Yes. Hi. Hi. Okay. So for the ele the elevator pitch, that's going to be one minute. Is is that correct? And what what details uh, do do we have to give during that elevator pitch? So the elevator pitch component we were talking about was for the pitch deck itself. So like your first slide, you know, it's going to be a version of your elevator pitch. Right now, you don't have to worry about timing um, because when you submit your application through the GUS platform, you're going to fill out all the application. Remember those tabs I, I, I showed earlier? Let me go back. Let me go back to it real quick. That way um, I can reference it. Um, you're going to, uh, here we go. Mm -hmm. So when you submit your application, you know, you're going to provide an overview of your business idea. You're going to upload your pitch deck. You're going to have a, a, a description. You're going to answer questions when it comes to your team. You're going to talk, you're going to provide an executive summary. You're going to talk about financials and documents. So okay. remember, this is the first phase. So when you submit your application, this is what the investors are going to look at. Once the investors take a look at the applications, they will select the top 20. And if you are part of those top 20, we will then provide you with some bootcamp training and we will provide you with additional information that will say, okay, now you're going to go pitch in front of the investors. This is how much time you have to, you have to give your pitch. So for, for the purposes of right now of submitting your application, do not worry about the time. Um, it's just a matter of um, providing all the information that's requested um, of you, you know, from this application. Okay, perfect. thank you. Yes, you're welcome. I do see also another uh, question in the chat that says, um, do you have to be a member of the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation to apply? The answer is no, you do not have to be a member of FHF to submit an application. Um, as a matter of fact, we are opening up this opportunity of investment to businesses, all businesses that operate here in the Central Valley. So you do not have to be a member. Um, are we limited to one business pitch application for applicant? Um, I am assuming you're wondering maybe if you have multiple businesses and you want to submit uh, a pitch for multiple businesses, that is um, totally fine. That's completely up to you. Um, I do just want to clarify that um, one application, one business idea or one existing business uh, ready to scale is uh, will have to pay the application fee. So if you're looking to submit two different applications, you will create, you know, just like we're looking here now at the at the profile of the questions that are going to be asked, you will have to do that individually. And to be able to do that, you have to have separate profiles so that you will have to pay, you know, two separate application fees. And if 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 I didn't answer your question fully, please, um, please let me know. I have a quick question. Uh, yes. So uh, we have a business and then under the business umbrella are these um three ideas, um, applications that would um, work with the business. So um, would we essentially incorporate that in one slide deck or do we need to do different ones for, because it's all tied together? If it's just one business idea, then it would be just one application. You would just, you know, if you have a couple components within your that one business idea, then it would be one pitch deck. But um, you know, it goes back to strategy, right? How you lay that out in, within your pitch deck. But um, yeah, if it's just one business idea with a couple components, then then it would just be one one pitch deck, one application. Remember, you know, we our recommendation with the template is about twelve slides. So if you find yourself with thirty or more slides, then that could potentially mean you have more than one business going. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, I know there was a couple other questions on the chat. Let me take a look at that real quick. Is the target demographic that we serve have to be within the Central Valley only? Um, we are targeting small businesses in the Central Valley. Like I mentioned, you know, this is something that we are looking to do because we know that, you know, if you're in the northern part of the state or like on the Bay Area, you know, there's a lot of different um even though it's primarily, you know, related to investment opportunities for tech companies and the same thing goes for down south. So we are looking to be inclusive of 
um, small businesses that are operating here in the Central Valley. And that means, you know, the eight county region, you know, from Kern County all the way to, you know, Stanislaus, San Joaquin County, anything that's here in the Central San Joaquin Valley. Um, with this application, we will have to give a percentage of our business to an investor. So that's a really good question. Remember, there was a section, let me go back to the application, okay, um, to the presentation. If you remember, there's a section here that we talk about the ask, right? You have to keep this in mind. You are the person that's proposing the business idea. You are the business owner. You make the ask. What is it? If you're looking for a $100,000 investment, and again, you know, we are the Fresno Hispanic Foundation is here to help you out with these things, but you're going to make the ask. So if you're looking for um, an investment of $100,000 in exchange for equity, that could be your position, you know, or it could not be, you know, there's different ways to make your ask and there's different ways, you know, maybe it's in the shape of a, a, a loan, for example, you know, it just really depends what your business idea is and what your business model is and where you want to take it, how you want to do that ask. And so there's different ways that um, the investment can be done. Um, again, once we have the top 20 businesses that get selected is when we will work with you one on one to ensure that what you're asking when it comes to investment is what you really want. I know sometimes, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, having let's say it's it's your small business, it's your family business, and you feel like, you know, you don't want to give ownership of, of that business. That's completely understandable. And that could be that it just means that the way that you shape your investment is different and doesn't require that, you know, the investors have to take ownership of, of your business. Okay. Are there any additional questions? I believe I covered all the questions in the chat. Um, I do just want to ask a question. I was the one that asked about the, you know, the target demographic being within, you know, the Central Valley. Um, let's just say that if it's something like an online service or like educational um, service, is it only limited to being able to invite people from the Central Valley or could this be, you know, something that we include people within the target demographics, um, you know, but let's say not really focusing on location. Does that make sense? Yeah, I can, I can, I can, I can see that. Yeah, that would totally be acceptable. Okay. You know, what we're looking at, so let's say, you know, and, and it could be very possible, right? There could be different business ideas or there could be different, you know, products or services that are being, um, you know, pitched that will maybe even go outside of the state. But the purpose that we have with this, you know, pitch competition and the angel group that we're forming is that, you know, we, we bring and that we benefit the small businesses here in our Central Valley. So if it means that, you know, your program service, your idea is going to reach out to others outside of the state and the region, we're all for that. Um, we're looking to benefit people that are here in, in, in the Central Valley. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Dalila? And no, no, let's go. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I have a question. Do you have any fish competition winner? from the last year or month for like example to send us? So this is the first year we are hosting a pitch competition for investment. But, oh, okay. um, mm -hmm. but what I can do is I can recommend, I think many of you may be familiar with, you know, Shark Tank. Um, because the, the individuals that go to Shark Tank are going there sure. for an investment and they all have different um, asks, right? Some are going asking for 100,000, some are going asking for, you know, different amounts, but 
I think if you're looking for sample, then maybe you can get some ideas from, from there. But of course, your product is unique, so you would just have to make that uh, correlation there. Yes. Um, Thank you very much. You're welcome. You guys don't know if we're today at all? Any other questions? Well, you know, on behalf of the Fresno Area Hispanic Foundation, I must say we're very excited to be able to provide, you know, this opportunity to the small businesses here in, in the Central Valley. Um, like I said, we are going to be following up with additional information with the recording, with uh, the template that we're going to provide, and um, the link um, to submit the application. In the process from now until the application deadline, please feel free to reach out if you have any questions. We will be scheduling a couple more sessions um, from now on, just so that we can continue answering any questions. Uh, potentially, you know, somebody might ask a question that you had not um, thought about. And so these type of settings, you know, tend to help with um, being able to answer questions as a group or, or um, you know, address any, any concerns. Um, is there a minimum or maximum amount that can be pitched? Here's, okay. The investment that we're looking to um, give for the first year, which is you know this year that this occasion, is a hundred thousand um, dollars. There could be a chance that we could fundraise additional dollars, um, you know, if we're able to recruit more investors, or we could have investors that say you know they want um, more than one unit into the fund, which means you know they have more funds to invest. There could be potential that you know you have um, the opportunity for additional investments. My answer to you would be pitch what you need for your business and how a hundred thousand dollars will help you. So maybe you need a hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Maybe you need you know two hundred thousand dollars. How will the a hundred thousand dollars help you? Um, because um, you, there could be additional funds available, but also don't think that you can ask for a million, right? We want to make sure that you're strategic. We want to make sure that we work with you through this process so that the amount that you're looking for is an amount that is, um, reasonable and applicable to your business idea, whether you're looking to launch it or whether you're looking to scale your existing business. So, you know, I hope that I, I helped answer that question. Do we have access to know who the different investors, companies that will be making the decisions are? Um, you will, after all the applications are submitted, um, we will, because you will be hearing directly from the investors. Um, once they select the top 20, they will also be doing, remember I talked about the due diligence they have to do, you know, they have to sit down with you, ask you questions about your business, um, about your business model. They have to do their own research, um, you know, to ensure that the investment that they're doing is, is where they want it to go. Um, so you will be aware of who those investors are. Any other questions? So the question is, I believe I missed the first part, but our presentation in front of the investors have to be in a PowerPoint. If you're referring to the, the pitch deck, you know, the pitch deck does not have to be PowerPoint. Um, you can use any other platforms as long as you have slides, um, you know, for, for your pitch deck. So. I know sometimes other platforms that people use are like Canva, um, or even if it's like a PDF that you want to upload, um, as long as it's in a form of a pitch deck, you know, a presentation uh, deck, it doesn't necessarily have to be PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Okay. okay, well with that, I'm going to share my contact information one more time. 
Um, for those of you that would like to reach out in case you have any additional questions after this session. I have a question. Yes. Um, do you yes. happen to have the date? Do you happen to have the date for the competition for the pitch competition, or will you provide that at a later time? We will provide that at the at a later time. Right now, what I can tell you is that it'll be at the end of October. Okay. Towards towards the end of October for the live okay. the live pitch of the top six finalists. Okay. Thank you. Um, as soon as you have that date, or you're able to share it. Um, would you be kind enough to just um, forward that to us? Just because I'm planning, um, I have like events, events already that I'm, I have booked in advance. That way I can. Yes, of course. Reschedule we them. Okay. Thank you. Of course, not a problem. You're welcome. Okay. All right. So, um, If anybody has any other questions, um, please reach out to us. Um, we're gonna stop the recording and um, we'll stop you know, the session here. We'll hang out for a few more minutes in case anybody has any additional questions.